Good day, Earth Science students. Welcome to video lecture episode 14. And today we're going to hopefully finish up section 1 of chapter 23, the Sun-Earth-Moon system. And remember last time we were talking about a tilted axis and trying to understand what causes seasons, okay? Uh, let's just go quickly back to slide 46. And slide 46 said this, daylight hours are longer for the hemisphere or half of the Earth that is tilted toward the sun. So think about this. Notice how it gets dark earlier in the winter compared to summer? Just a thought there. All right, so let's move into slide 47. The hemisphere that is tilted towards the sun receives more hours of sunlight each day than the hemisphere that is tilted away from the sun. The longer period of sunlight is one reason for summer, that is why it's warmer than winter, but it's not the only reason. So let's talk about radiation from the sun as another uh, factor to consider. Earth's tilt also causes the sun's radiation to strike the hemispheres at different angles. The hemisphere tilted toward the sun receives more direct rays, thus more total, thus more total solar radiation than the hemisphere tilted away from the sun. Summer occurs in the hemisphere tilted towards the sun, where the sun appears high in the sky. Its radiation strikes Earth at a higher angle and for longer periods of time. The hemisphere receiving less radiation experiences winter. All right, now let's talk about solstices in connection with this concept and understanding of how, um, how things, seasons change. The solstice is the day when the sun reaches its greatest distance north or south of the equator. In the northern hemisphere, the summer solstice occurs on June 21st or June 22nd, and the winter solstice occurs on December 21st or 22nd. Now in the southern hemisphere, it's reversed. The winter solstice is in June and the summer solstice is in December. All right. Now, summer solstice is nearly the longest day of the year. After the summer solstice, days begin to get shorter. The winter solstice, on the other hand, is nearly the shortest day of the year, but after the winter solstice, the period of sunlight grows longer each day. Just something to keep in perspective. All right. Now let's move to slide 55 and let's begin talking about equinoxes. An equinox occurs when the sun is directly above Earth's equator. Because of the tilt of Earth's axis, the sun's position relative to the equator changes constantly. Most of the time, the sun is either north or south of the equator, but two times each year it is directly over it, resulting in the spring and fall equinoxes. Now, if you look on slide 56, like I said, I have an image illustrating this, okay, so you can see. But on the equinox, the sun's most direct rays shine on the equator, all right? During an equinox, the number of daylight hours and nighttime hours, and nighttime hours is nearly equal all over the world. Also at this time, neither the northern hemisphere nor the southern hemisphere is tilted towards the sun. In the northern hemisphere, the sun reaches the spring equinox on March 20th or March 21st, and the fall equinox occurs on September 22nd or September 23rd. In the southern hemisphere, the equinoxes are reversed. Spring occurs in September, and fall occurs in March. Now, let's talk a little bit about what we've learned. Uh, let's kind of review some data we've learned on Earth. We've learned that Earth is a sphere and rotated on a tilted axis. This rotation causes day and night. Earth's tilted axis and its revolution around the sun causes the seasons. One Earth revolution takes one year, 365 days as we know it. Now in the next section, we're going to read how the moon rotates on its axis and revolves around the Earth. So that's going to be our discussion next time. All right. And this concludes uh, chapter 23, section 1, and this lecture for today. I do hope it's been helpful. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Reach out to me via email or messaging. Have a nice day. Take care, students.